Rama Sakote Rede. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Carabos Condoria. Thank you. We love you. Help us to love you more. Draw us to yourself. Let nothing stop you from doing what you have proposed to do. One thing we know is that no one has ever come in contact with you and has remained the same. All we ask, oh God, in this ministry is that only you will take the glory. No man, not one person, because you are still the captain of the host. You are still the commander in chief. You are still in charge. We step aside and we allow you to be who you choose to be. One thing we know is that the glory will come down and the glory will be all yours. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, loving God, who has promised to do exceedingly abundantly. Yes. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Minister Maker said something when he was praying. He said the most important thing in life is not whether we are going to go to heaven or not. It's being where he is. That's the ultimate. But you know, being where he is does not mean you will begin to live your life your way. He has protocols. He has procedure. He has a pattern. And if we must approach him, we will approach him in his own order. And one of that order is that he said, you must be holy. This is not my message. But when he was talking, you must be holy because I, the Lord, I'm a holy God. And thank God for a while now, the father in the house has been teaching on the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then, it's a gift, gifts of the Holy Spirit, which means he's the one that dispenses the gift, not man. I must have intimacy with him. And he is such a gentle spirit that the slightest thing you do, he goes. He can only come in when you allow him. When there was chaotic environment at the beginning of the creation, the Bible said the earth was lifeless without form. Darkness covered the face of the deep. God could have complained. God could have whined. God could have said something. You know, why? I made this seem beautiful. Why am I having this? Like you, 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 and more we do. But what did God do? He spoke what he wanted into being. And he was only setting a pace for you and for me to learn. Jesus Christ, all he did was first of all to do and to teach. So that when he goes and he has gone up there to, meet, to be with the Father, where he belongs. That you and I will follow and walk in his step. So in Acts 1, he told us, carry you in Jerusalem until you, you be endued with power. Because we live in a fallen world. A place 
where sin abounds. A place where darkness fills everywhere. A place of, you know, depression, anxiety, lack, joblessness, death, diseases, all kinds of things. And if you are, you, I know you read on social media, you see the things that men have started to become lovers of them, their own self, no more lovers of God. If service goes beyond the hour, we grumble. If it's the person is not the person we love to speak to us, we turn off. We forget that God is not a respecter of anybody. God can use babes. That's why he said, out of the mouth of babes, he ordains praise. He can use anybody. And when anybody becomes too big for him, he withdraws. Then he will say, I sought for a man. He is seeking for a man. And this morning, God is looking for men and women that he can hold their hands like he held the hands of Enoch. And the Bible says, Enoch walked with God until he was no more. Because God said, uh-uh, you've seen too much. I love your presence. I love, I love the, the fellowship I have with you. Come home. But for those of us who are still here today, guess what? He's giving us a mandate. Say, go out there into the world and preach the gospel. But he did not leave us powerless. He gave us authority over satanic influence, over sicknesses and diseases, over everything that want to turn this world into a chaotic arena. And in Isaiah 60, through the mouth of the prophet, he said, Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. We are seeing it. And he didn't say, he said, deep darkness, the people. That's why people will now tell you that marriage or family does not constitute just a man and a woman. It is a man and a woman, a man and a man, a woman and a woman. But that is not the plan of God. It became what we are seeing today because we did not let our light shine. We strive to be like them. Instead of setting the pace to follow, for them to follow, we allow them to create an image in their form. And then they presented that image to you and to me. And telling us, behold the God that brought you out of Egypt. And before we knew what was happening, before we knew what was happening, things began to slide down. And today, you just telling anybody I'm a child of God, get them offended. Why wouldn't they be offended? When our light is no more shining, when we are no more brightening the corners where we are, in your neighborhood, who knows you as a Christian? In your office, who knows you as a child of God? In your marketplace, who knows you as a child of God? When you are driving on the highway, on the byways, you are driving on this Apapo Shield, and you are in a traffic, can they tell that you are a child of God? Not by the sticker that is on your car, but by the way you behave, the way you talk, the way you react. That is the only way we can rise and shine. And suppress the thick darkness that is upon that, the earth. But guess what? We can't because we pushed the Holy Spirit 
out of our lives. We live our life. We compete amongst one another. This one we say, I'm, I'm of Paul. I'm of Apollos. I am for Peter. Did Peter die for you? Did Apollos die for you? Did Paul die for you? Who died? Jesus. When your eyes, when my eyes is focused on Jesus. Porosi Kariba. The mountains will move. The seas will part way. There will be manna coming down. The sick will be healed. Cancer will die. Sickle cell will die. Diseases will bow. Because you carry God the Father. God the Son. God the Holy Spirit in you. The God that the enemies of his people will say, let us run away from these people. For their God fighted for them. But there is a road that we have to take. A road of sacrifice. For the miracles to happen. I'm not talking about the effect miracles. I'm not talking about the one we push them down. You don't have to push them down. You don't have to touch anybody. Bring them to Golgotha. Bring them to the foot of the cross. Leave them there. The woman with the issue of blood, what did she say? If I only touch the hems of his garment, was she whole? Was she complete? Was she healed? Nobody touched her. She reached out. She reached out and God is telling you to do the same thing. It's, the ball is in your court, in my court. When pastor started teaching this, he created a hunger in me. I said, Father, every gift I lost as a result of carelessness, I regain it back. I take it back. Everything that was stolen from me by the thief who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. It's about time this life takes it back. And that is the same thing God is asking you to do. Because the Bible says, if the spirit that raised Jesus from the grave dwells in the pastor's, the elders, the bishops. So why is it that you always run into the bishops or the pastors? Abby, maybe it's only the pastors and the bishops and the evangelists that have the power. No, we are talking, right? Because we are in a season of the Holy Spirit sharing the water. He says, as many as are thirsty, they shall be filled. We now want to be babysitted. We now want to be baby fed. We now want to, everything to be given to us on the platter of gold. There is a place called there. There is a power that is called this kind that has to confront a this kind situation. And a this kind situation comes only when you are what? Alone with God. And being alone with God, you have to develop it. If you have not been alone in your secret place at your home, you cannot be alone even when we are in church. When you have cultivated the habit of being alone with him, it's just one song will catapult you to the third heavens where you will see strange things, where you will hear this is the way, walk he therein, where he will tell you that business is a bad one. Don't do it. That journey, don't make it. 
oh, that dress, don't wear it. There was a lady in those days. She was going somewhere. She said she brought out a dress. It was red in color. And Holy Ghost said, don't wear that color. Because she's used to listening to the Holy Spirit. It was with a struggle. She removed the dress. Guess what? They had assigned somebody. They said, the lady will come with a red dress at the bus stop. But because she has changed, she didn't wear the red dress. She was spared. She did not die another man's death. When the Holy Spirit, remember, Pastor thought about, talked about revelation. Word of knowledge. Word of wisdom. The vocal gift, the revelational gift, the power gifts. It is you desiring to have them. So he said, arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory, the glory. I always tell people, I said, God didn't make mistake in calling us glory Christian ministry. Whatever it is that is stopping God's glory from shining through you or through me in this place, we cause the root of it. You didn't hear me well. It can't stay. Because God dwells in our midst. How dare anything outside glory come to roost or pitch his tent? We knock down that tent. We pull down that tent. We destroy that tent. We push it out. You prince of Persia that operate in this arena, hear the word of God. The church has come and has taken its place. We frustrate your activities. Oh, Ricardo Basanto. It takes a prince to bind a prince. Do we have prince in the house? I want you to stand up. Those of you on this side, you are going to face this side. Those of you on that side, you face this side. Those of you here, you face here. Those of you here, you are facing there. You are going to take authority over the prince of Persia that has been frustrating our activity, our growth, our, our progress. Declare. Paul! I'm not hearing your voice. I'm not hearing your voice. Pray in the Holy Ghost. 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 Close every back door. Kotatata. Laka papa. The doors of sickness. The doors of cancer. The doors of degenerating disease. The doors of barrenness. The doors of lack. The doors of frustration. The doors of pride. Carabos. Samalida. Sakatete. Rakapando. Oh. Bless spirit. Bless. Set this place on fire. Let it become uncomfortable. Pori Kabanda. Kakatala dosidi, Zeketeli Baruda, Inkaria, Inkaria, die, be burnt, blow the wind of Jehovah, blow out every strange thing, every declaration, negative, every plundering spirit. We plunder you. Every destroyer. We destroy you. Every spirit that goes after the progress of God's people. We come against you. We tear your stronghold down. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Karabosikia. Mandarada, 
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Please be seated. Mark chapter 9. We'll read from verse 14. Mark chapter 9, verse 14. Or before Mark chapter 9, can we read John 14, 26? John 14, 26. John 14, 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, because we read it in different translations. He said, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring you to remembrance all things that I said to you. Who will the helper teach? No, he's going to teach only the pastors. It's only pastors. Why are you saying no? So why do you struggle with praying by yourself? That you have to wait for somebody. Why is it that when there is a pain, the first thing you reach out is paracetamol? Why is it that you tend to blame somebody? Oh, it's because they are not anointed. Are you not part of the body? Are you not part of Christ's body? Eh? You know what thing God told me this is when I've been praying? He said, tell my people to stop looking for somebody to spoon feed them. He said, I have prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemy. I don't think somebody heard me. He prepared a table. Where? So do you expect the enemy to fold his hands where you are coming to eat? But you are not alone. Because pastor has told us here, God has our back. Our big brother is there. And the comforter is backing us. So when we come to that place, the father says, son, I know you. You got this. You can handle this. Daughter, you can handle. I trust you. I know you are well able. And then you say, no, Father, you know I'm not able. He said, don't worry. My son is there. That's why he died. So he's there. You say, hey, but he has gone to heaven. He said, the Holy Spirit abides. The ever abiding presence of God is where? Not on the head, but inside you. Inside you, not outside. And all is waiting is for you, for the, 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 the child to stop being a slave and mature and grow and take his place. Then the, Holy, the father will know, nod his head and say, now I have a son. He's no more a servant. He said, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the father sent, will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. All things that I said. Which means your part is you must hear what he's saying. Nobody will hear it for you. Shoti Bo, and you watching online, nobody, if you don't create time, to read the word, if you don't create time to be alone with him, if you don't create time to meditate, if you don't create time to, to allow the word change you, the helper cannot do anything. Because what you are not giving God any raw material. He said, he will bring to your remembrance all things that I said. That I said, which means you must be paying attention. 
atten um, attentiveness. It's not the time to be looking right, looking right, literally be saying, are you the one or shall we wait for another? He is the one. You pay attention to him. You listen to him. You allow him. You, you, and as he's talking to you, you are writing. That's why when you come to my bed, you go see my notebook, you did there. And as I hear anything, I will jot it down. I will jot it down. Then when I'm praying, I say, Holy Ghost, this, you know I'm not there yet. You know I'm nothing. It's empty barrel. I need an infilling. I need you to bring to my remembrance what the Father has spoken. And then he will begin to say, my word is your rod. My word is everything you need. The sword. You cut rightly, you will cut the enemy. You cut wrongly, you will cut yourself because it's a two-edged sword. So you interpret it wrongly. He said, so be it. Rightly dividing the word of truth. The Holy Ghost said he will. Please give me um, the, the, this thing I gave you. Mark 9, verse 14. And when he came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around them and the scribes disputing with them. Let's go, let's go. And when immediately when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed and running to him, greeted him. 16. And he asked the scribes, what are you discussing with them? Then one of the crowd answered, one of the crowd answered and said, teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit. And where, wherever he seizes him, he throw him down. He throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. Bad devil. So I spoke to your disciples. Are we God's disciples? Are we sure? You know, pastor said every service will be having demonstration. We'll bring demon possessed. We'll bring these cases. And we begin to give to everybody. You know one day he's going to do it. He will not tell you the day. Because we say, oh, we are a pumping station. The pillar and foundation of truth. Pillar of truth. Abi, disciples, what happened? They should cast it out, but, 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 does that describe you? Eh? Okay, now, we will, we will, so we have one lolo here, our, uh, Deacon, deaconess, we are going to bring somebody. Okay. They could not. See, we, we all have failed God. That's why our world is what it is. Stop blaming President Tunubu. If we have risen and our light has been shining, as Christians, we would have seen that his reign will plunge us into the situation we are in today. And what will happen? When they were distributing that five kg of rice, we will reject it. True or false? Because where there is no vision, the people perish. We didn't see it. Did we? We made it a tribe issue. We made it a religious issue. Unfortunately, even those of us that are believers, 
we still voted him. I'm sorry. I'm, you see, I had faith in the man. I didn't vote in him anyway. They didn't even let me vote. Because when I went to register, they said I cannot register. I don't know why. Only to realize that they were collecting money for you to register. I didn't register, so I couldn't vote. But I resolved to pray. And I said, Father, let your will be done. But you know where I took comfort? Where is the Bible says that God will give you a leader after your heart. So he has given us a leader that we deserve in this country. Until there is a turnaround. Until Christians rise up and refuse tribe. Refuse political affiliation. I am God's representative here on earth. I enforce the will of God here on earth. If every church in Nigeria had voted because we saw it, we heard it, do you know we won't be where we are today? True or false? True or false? I don't know. Please, Father, I'm sorry. But the disciples could not. But look at what happened after that. Go. And wherever, no, 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 19 now. Sorry. He answered him and said, Oh, faithless generation. Do you see why things are not happening? I'm talking about faithless generation. That when we don't do what we are expected to do, that is what describes us. It's faithless. Faithless in the fact that he, look at what he told him. He said, oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Please give me this verse 19 in Amplified. This verse 19, please. Let's go. And he answered, Oh, unbelieving, without any how long shall I have to do with you? How long am I to bear with you? Do you have it in TPT? If not, give us in uh, New Living. Is it New Living? Yeah, New Living Translation, NLT. Sorry, I'm pushing you guys. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Jesus said, you faithless people. He didn't say generation. Now, I'm just trying to let you bring, bring out the various things. You faithless people. How long must I be with you? Because he knew he was going. Everything he did was to infuse faith in them. So that we too can learn from them. How long must I put with you? Bring the boy. Verse 20. Verse 20. Go back to our new living tribe. Um, new King James. Go back. Sorry. Then they brought him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him. And he fell. Jesus did not touch him. But he recognized the power in him. He recognized the spirit of God in him. That's why I said it's not manual labor. I don't know about you. That's where I am with God right now. I said, mm -mm. Idahosa stayed and said, they will not hold the meeting. And did it happen? He said, the meeting cannot hold. 
And when they insisted, he said, I don't need to disturb God in this matter. Because this is my domain. Yes. I am in charge. Are we? If we are in charge, why is everything going upside down? And we are complaining. There was a time a paint of beans was how much? Three years ago. Eh? Okay, one year ago. How much was a paint of beans? <laughs> how much is a paint of beans now? Good. So, but do you know we could have avoided all that if we had seen in the spirit? See, I'm not blaming anybody. Every one of us played a role because we don't see, we don't hear, we don't abide in his presence. The power in him roared. He didn't, the moment the boy saw him, he fell on the ground, wallowed, foaming at the mouth. Let's go. So he asked his father, how long has this happened, been happening to him? And the father said, since from childhood, since from childhood, the power that is resident is in you. Is what God is expecting you to go out there and shine. Yes, that power can make you rich, oh, but there, has, there is something bigger than riches. Because the Bible says, when a man's way pleases God, he will give you power to make wealth. The wealth will follow. I am God that gives power to make wealth. But when the power is resident, God will surround you with things that you've been fighting, you've been going after. From childhood. Let's continue. Let's continue. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on what? 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 On us. I don't want to put the man's uh, father there. It's on me. I need God to help me. To stand in this office. To not just preach the word carelessly. To not just... Give empty word. Pray, nothing happens. Push people down, nothing happens. Claim something has happened, all lies. But I'm not saying there are no genuine ones. There are healings. There are things happening. But it's something every one of us. I'm, I'm here this morning to challenge you. To step out of your boat of comfort. He said, come. God saw that he was going to stir up his water through the Holy Spirit when he gave us that word. Come, step out to your miracle. Step out to your healing. Step out to your breakthrough. Step out to your grace. Everybody under the sound of my voice or watching online, there is a grace available for you to function in an office. It could be in, in Psalms, in hymns, or anything. Don't wait for anybody because the Christ that is in you is the Christ that is in me. Is the Christ that is in the bishops. Is the Christ that is in the miracle workers. Those ones have paid the price. But every day our mouth is moving. We throw ekpa here. We throw uh, donut here. We throw meat pie here. A bottle of coke here. A cup of tea here. 
and we are not paying the price, then the world has become what it is because we have chosen to go the way that is easy. So why will things not be tough for us? We should be willing to pay the price. And God is calling unto us to come up to the mountains and be there. It took Moses how many days to be on top of the mountain? How many? How many? 40 days. Did he eat? Did he drink? Did he do anything? Mm -hmm. But we know that some people, we can't even fast six to six anymore. And we are seeking for the power. And we are looking for healing. A time we have to come where you will hold the horns of the altar and say, I will not let you go until. Because seeking God will bring a dimension of faith like that woman with the issue of blood. She said, all I need is not the man even noticing me. It's just to touch the hems of his garment and I will be whole. And she got her healing. That is her. For me, I don't know. I'm just telling you my cry. I said, Father, I don't need this thing. It's just me and you. I want to know you. I just want to know who you are. The miracle Jesus did, you and I can do it. Remember when he fed the 5,000 people, right? When he fed them in Matthew 14, what happened? They said they had only how many fishes? Two. And how many loaves of bread? Five. Other trans uh, um, writers will say it was from a boy, a boy's meal that made his disciples say, Lord, how much, is this? How, how much can this do? Nothing. This cannot do anything. But God made it happen. In their own hand. What was, that was what Jesus was demonstrating. After he prayed, blessed this thing. I'm sure some of them were saying, <laughs> what will this five fish, two fish, five loaves of bread, tiny bread for one person. It's now 5,000. And then they said there were women and men. And you know that in every congregation, in every gathering like that, you have more of women. But in their hands, that multiplication took place. And at the end, they collected excess. Men of like passion, like you. You might say, oh, that's Bible. You've heard of John Knott, right? Praying people, you should know about John Knott. Or Chasfini. Chasfini said, give me Scotland or I die. Praying hard, prayed until it was said beside his bed, his knees created a hole. I think it's John Knott also, I'm not sure. One of them, that the, his heart moved from this side to the, this side. Because he was asking God, if I'm your representative here on earth, something must happen. Glory Christian ministries and center. God is calling on us. Say, come up. There is something I want to accomplish with you. Through you, I want to raise the, the Lazaruses. Through you, I want the bleeding. Bleeding of dreams. Bleeding of talent. The bleeding of precious babies to be restored. Through you, I want the, there to be a supernatural intervention. God suspending the natural way of things and coming in. And he can use anybody. He can use the child. He can use the men. He can use the women. He can use the elderly. He can use everybody if you are a child of God. The question is, what will you do with this Christ? What will you do with the teaching that our Father has been teaching us 
concerning the Holy Spirit. He enters here, he goes here. I was meant to ask those in the video room or the audio room, how many people have come to ask, how can I get those messages? When that message was going on, I recorded them. Every night I played them. I want the spirit to become life. The word to come, become flesh. So that I can represent God wherever I go. So that I will depopulate the hospitals. If you are praying for me, don't ask God to bless me with food, with money. Say, God, this, my prayer is, Lord, I want to represent you. Here on earth. Here on earth, not wishy-washy. Evidential miracle. And I know it will happen before I close my eyes. The only thing is that, can I pay the price? That is what God is asking every one of us. The singers, the SOTR, the TBG, the daughters of Zion, the Abrahams, the mamas, the papas, the young, the old, the ones that just come every Sunday. If you are born again, you are not supposed to be a bench warmer. We call out for evangelism. Be there. Because that's what sharpens. That's what makes the gift come alive. God will help us. God will do it for us. In the name of Jesus. As I close this morning, I want to ask you, have you made room for God's gifts to be seen or made manifest in your life? Have you? And one way you can make room for him is remove unbelief. Remove faithlessness. Be daring in your desire. A godly desire. Be daring. Don't allow nosy neighbors to shut you down. Remember when that man, blind Bartimaeus, he heard that Jesus was passing. When he started shouting, Jesus of Nazareth, help me. What did they tell him? Shut up, better people, they won't see Jesus. Now you blind man won't see Jesus. The more they try to restrain him, the more he... Some of you, somebody will tell you, ah, this is your own too much. You're quiet. Every day you are in church. Do you know that's why some of us have stopped? Ah, every time you are fasting. See how lean you have become. It's just like nosy neighbors will announce your miracle. Ne nosy neighbors will stop your miracle. So you, they will tell, I beg you, why cool down, cool your temperature, okay? Hmm? Before you hurt yourself. Somebody told me, say, ah, this is your own self. Pull down now, you will hurt yourself. I say, if I'm hurting myself in the presence of God, he has the power to resurrect me. Dare them! I said, I will live and not die. Oh, they said, nobody survived that sickness. Says who? Are you nobody? You are somebody. A child of God. Bought by the blood. Washed by the blood. Cleansed. Putting on the righteousness of God. That sickness is not unto death. It's so that the power of God and the glory of God will be made manifest. I challenge whatever it is. I break his power. I turn things around for you. You foul spirit of infirmity. I come in the name above every other name. The name Jesus. He is our Savior. My Savior. He delivered me from six troubles. 
and the seventh one he did. The same way he did it, he will do it for everyone under the sound of my voice in the name of Jesus. Not by might, not by power, but by his spirit. So as I close, let me tell you this. In the university, you know, in those days, as you are graduating, the next thing everybody is saying, oh, you are going outside the world. I kept saying, which one be outside the world? The walls of university. And you know, you must, you must have somebody that you are engaged to. Because once you graduate, it's difficult to marry. That was, it. That, that was the story we were hearing. I was engaged to this boy, really. He was in BUK, I was in ABU. And he was a year ahead of me. And lo and behold, he was serving in Agbo. So I was going to the east. So I said, okay, let me branch to see him in Agbo. So I went there. As I went to Agbo, where they were lodging them. So he said, come, 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 come. By then, my name was Angela. He said, Angela, come. He said, he had, he had a dream. And in that dream, he took me to the altar. And then the priest who was to wed us handed me over to another brother. That I should explain. Because it means I have been unfaithful to him. <laughs> Jesus. I said, now you get the dream. Now you go explain. He said, that means since he left, I've been going, I'm unfaithful. Ah. I shake my head. I say, Jesus. And this is a brother I look up to because he was one of the praying machines that we had. When we go to Nifes, I say, sure. And that was my final year. That I, I came out with, I would have come out with a better result. I ended up coming out with a 2 2 because my wall crushed. My friends were saying, hey, so you're not going to marry again. You know, when you leave the university outside the world, no more marriage, or no brother will marry you again. That's why you, what is this? I said, I don't know. My life has finished. Oh, my life has finished. I refused to go for lecture because I was crying until my father in the Lord he said, I will slap you. That's why you need a mentor. He said, by the time I finish beating you, you will not remember your name again. He will carry me from our campus to where my lecture is. He said, I will force you to go and read. So that's how I went. I started reading. But with pain. Because everybody was saying, Hey, hi, Chineke. <laughs> how, Sister Angela, what happened now? Help me. With that mind, I went for youth call. And I told myself, Everything in trouser, they are my enemy. If you're a sister, you wear trouser, you are my enemy. That was the mindset. But guess what? God sent somebody from all that way, Potakot, and came to Bauchi, where I was serving, and changed everything around. So, turned things around. We, we, we weren't, we were just, in everything, he put us together. He, team, team, team. The guidance of the Holy Spirit. We were in the same evangelical team. We were in the same. He was serving in Polytechnic. I was serving in College of Agric. His house is across the express. My own, I live in the campus. Everything started falling in place. The Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit. He now said, he told me, he said, let go. He said, I said, let go what now? I said, anything in trousers, me and them, we know they meet. I said, Libe. Straight. <laughs> That's heavenly race. Until God gave me, I think Isaiah 43, is it 43 verse 18 and 19? If I'm right, because it's been a long time. But this morning as I was preparing that message, he gave me that verse. Where he says, remember not the former things. For I, the Lord, we do a new thing. 
That's how God delivered me. I don't know who you are. Because of what you are going, you've gone through. And they are telling you, your Nazareth will never blossom. Says who? For as long as Jehovah is on the throne, your Nazareth will blossom. There shall come out of that rubble beauty. Because when God turns your captivity around, you will be like them that dream, dream. Now, I married my friend. I married my mentor. I'm, though we were in the same platoon. He just repented a month to his uh, youth service. And of course, we had that zeal. But I was looking at him and I said, hey, worldliness, carnality, you know, deeper life. I said, which kind of brother be this? Ah, he's shaking hands with people. He, because he had that zeal, he wants to evangelize everybody. I said, God. Ha. But somehow, along the line, after youth call, I was posted to, I got a job in Mina. And the story changed. And today, here we are. Here we are. Because we gave, I gave God, the Holy Spirit, a chance to speak. For as long as I was holding on to that bitterness, that everything in trouser, and see me see trouble. You see everybody that is in trouser that disappointed me. But that's what happened when Satan blindfolds you. He make you hate everybody. I could have missed it all. I don't know who you are. Loosen up. Don't let that pass imprison you. That's where you need the world of wisdom, knowledge, and revelation. So that you will free yourself, deliver thyself, O captive daughter of Zion. That somebody broke your wife, it meant to be broken. That relationship was, if I marry somebody else, I will I for go down like this. He has never beaten me. I learned from him. The person where I say him, repent one month before coming. The man overtook me. In scriptural things. And I was looking, I said, this one where I see for our, hey, hey this thing. See, I just quote, quote scripture. How about God? I want to be like him. I want to quote scripture. I want to do this. Because the Holy Spirit delivered me. And it started with what? Hearing him. That's why I told you this story. Hear the word of God. Hold to it. Be willing to obey. Because you can hear, you will not be willing to listen. But God will deliver every one of us from the shackles of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Sorry for taking your time. I hope somebody was blessed. I hope somebody was blessed. So as I step down, we are going through a challenge. Oh, Jesus, I'm sorry. You are here this morning and you found yourself where I found myself because of something, that an event that took place and you are finding it difficult to let go. I believe God sent me to you. Can you just stand up? Every eye close. Every eye close. Where the spirit is Lord, there is liberty. I want you to stand up on your feet. I want you to step out to the altar. You're not coming to faith, James. You're coming to Baba God. If you want to cry, cry. Whatever it is, come. Say, come as you are. He wants to heal you. He wants to give you a new beginning. He said, remember not the former things, for I, the Lord, I will do a new thing. Let God heal you. Sister, he sees the tears. It's only you and him. Cry out to him and say, Father, I don't know how you will do it, but I believe you. You have done it for people in the past. I believe you can do it for me. 
Let his power touch. Can we close your eyes? I said, everybody close your eyes. I didn't say open your eyes. It's between them and God. So you want to tell me it's only ladies that go through that? You want to sit where you are sitting? That's fine. But remember, after now, God will say, I gave you an opportunity. What did you do with it? Cry out to him and say, Father, you are a God of restoration. Ask God to restore. Ask God to restore. Cry out for restoration on behalf of our brethren. That God will wipe away the tears in their eyes. That the author and finisher of their faith will give them a new beginning. It's possible. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let deliverance flow in Zion, the city of God, for it is written in the holy word of God that upon Mount Zion deliverance we flow. Let deliverance flow in Zion, the city of God. Let it flow. Let deliverance flow in Zion, the city of God. For it is written in the holy world. please come and prophesy over them and let the yoke be broken Lord the purpose of your word is to heal and to deliver them from this destruction. We stand upon that infallible word to pronounce this morning that these ones are healed. These ones are delivered in the name of Jesus. That the same God that did it for a moment for James, we do it for them again. And this one we have to tell their story to affect lives out there again. Jesus mighty name. And amen. Father, we thank you. You can go back to this. Labor hardship. And we stand on our feet just for one minute. Crofosi, crofosu, crofatus, keep a higher. Ladi, keep praying a satire, a deep rahana, sila, tika, brahataya. Ye niki maraho, sumbly, any mahila, liki, praying usua. Ya prusu kuprihini, busuki, bini huria. Ya bili uribe kasuki, bini haila, huria, bahaila. Zazia baria baraka, suiri, a baria, and a sikaya. Let this wise Lord be a bam and a healing to our soul. A bam and a healing to our lives. A bam and a healing to our businesses and our career. Thank you, Father, for your word that saved and delivered. Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.